We carry time like a stone, worn smooth by constant handling, heavy with the weight of accumulated regrets and shimmering with the polish of treasured memories. We mourn the past as if it's vanished treasure, fear the future like an approaching storm, and worship the present as if it's a fragile bubble about to burst. The ticking clock governs our lives with the tyranny of absolute law. But what if this entire relationship is built on a fundamental misunderstanding? Consider how mountains stand unmoved by seconds, how galaxies spin without counting minutes. What if time is not the river carrying us helplessly forward, but the eternal riverbed through which experiences flow? What if every moment that has ever been or will ever be is already carved into the stone of existence, waiting only for our awareness to brush across its surface? The great physicist Albert Einstein hinted at this radical truth when he declared that the distinction between past, present and future is nothing but a stubbornly persistent illusion a trick of consciousness rather than a feature of the universe. Einstein's block universe theory isn't philosophical speculation. It's mathematical reality emerging from the equations of relativity. Space-time isn't a flowing stream, but frozen lightning, a four-dimensional sculpture where your first childhood steps, your greatest achievements, and your final breath all coexist simultaneously. Imagine this not as theory, but as cosmic architecture. You're sitting in carriage number 3292 of an infinite train, calling this particular seat now. But carriage 10,000, where you'll experience your greatest joy a decade from now, is already fully constructed, stocked with emotions you haven't yet felt. Meanwhile, carriage number one, containing your first cry at birth, still reverberates through the metal framework. You are not merely riding this train, you are the entire train every carriage existing simultaneously in the cosmic station. From inside your chosen carriage, you see only darkness outside the window of this moment. But from a higher perspective, the entire luminous snake of your existence coils through cosmic valleys, fully present at once. Neuroscience confirms this radical view. Your brain doesn't actually experience now, but constructs reality from a 0.5 second delay an edited highlight reel of electrical pulses where what you call present is really just your memory of the immediate past. If reality functions as an advanced simulation, time becomes nothing more than a tick underscore counter variable in cosmic code, not a fundamental force but a functional tool like gravity or color. The system operates on elegant principles. All possible states exist as latent data. Your consciousness sends specific API requests through focused attention, and reality renders only what you observe. Consider a forest existing simultaneously in multiple states, as a low-poly dream when unobserved, as vivid detail when under your gaze, as burnt ashes if you light a match, or as overgrown ruins if you abandon it. These aren't metaphors but potential rendering paths in the cosmic engine. The glitches we experience reveal this underlying architecture. Deja vu occurs when the cache accidentally loads parallel renders. Synchronicity happens when background processes leak into conscious awareness. Precognition manifests when buffers preload future frames. Your attention isn't passive observation but an active rendering command. Every glance literally compiles reality from quantum potential. The Copenhagen interpretation popularized the notion that observation collapses quantum waves, but this is incomplete. The deeper truth reveals that you don't observe reality, you birth it into existence. Schrodinger's famous cat experiment takes on new meaning. The cat isn't dead or alive, but both simultaneously across infinite branches of possibility. Your attention functions not as a flashlight illuminating what exists, but as a machete cutting one specific path through the quantum jungle. Your emotional state operates as a precise resonance field. Fear vibrates at chaotic low frequencies that generate scattered outcomes. Joy resonates at crystalline high frequencies that organize coherent realities. Rage creates fractal corruption in the waveform. Laboratory proof emerges from water crystal experiments under electron microscopes. Water exposed to love intent forms sacred geometric patterns, while hate thought creates toxic sludge formations. Since your body is 70% water, this poses the fundamental question. What reality are you crystallizing through your emotional resonance? The block universe and multiverse theories present seemingly contradictory views. 
The block model suggests a fixed sculpture where destiny is fully written, while the multiverse model imagines a growing coral reef of infinite possibilities. The ancient concept of Akashic Records resolves this paradox, not as metaphor but as quantum library mathematically consistent with holographic universe models. Every thought ever conceived, every kiss ever exchanged, every betrayal endured exists recorded in the spin of subatomic particles. You exist simultaneously in three roles, the actor reading predetermined lines, the writer editing the script in real time, and the audience emotionally reacting to the performance. This triune existence explains how free will and destiny coexist. You are always following a script, but you choose which stage to perform it on. The past isn't fixed, but remains editable through present awareness, like a cosmic Wikipedia page where your current consciousness holds admin privileges. Modern neuroscience shatters our linear perception of time. Functional MRI scans prove that remembering is literally reliving. Neurons fire identically whether experiencing an event or recalling it. This means your childhood trauma isn't over, but remains a live electrical circuit in your present reality. Meanwhile, your future exists not as empty space, but as a probability cloud of superimposed waveforms. Perhaps 20% chance of that promotion, 15% possibility of a car accident, 5% potential for lottery windfall, and 60% likelihood of mundane stability. This framework transforms regret. That mistake you mourn still exists in carriage 2917 of your existence. Train, but carriage 8002 holds a causal override where its consequences never manifested. The past remains accessible not as memory, but as territory you can revisit through coherent awareness. While the future isn't unwritten, but awaits your selection from existing options. True manifestation operates through tuning fork physics rather than wishful thinking. To select a new reality, you must first identify its specific frequency signature. Abundance might resonate at 528 hertz, while love vibrates at 432 hertz. You then embody this resonance through posture, breath patterns, and neural chemistry until your entire being broadcasts the signal. Finally, you maintain this broadcast until reality synchronizes to your frequency. Consider this as nature's version of a programming loop. If your vibration matches abundance, the cosmic code loads the wealth underscore branch underscore seven reality. If your frequency drops to anxiety, it triggers collapse underscore timeline underscore three. Documented medical miracles illustrate this principle. Thousands of case studies show patients visualizing perfect health as quantum template their cells receiving holographic blueprints that flip epigenetic switches to produce spontaneous remissions. This isn't mysticism, but quantum biology. Your consciousness constantly selects which pre-existing health state to manifest. Mastering non-linear reality requires three fundamental shifts. First, prioritize coherence over force. Stop pushing against reality and become the magnetic center that attracts desired outcomes through 17-second breath cycles that synchronize heart and brain rhythms. Second, cultivate awareness over autopilot. Recognize how habits chain you to familiar timelines and perform hourly choice scans to break reflexive behavior loops. Third, value silence over noise. Reduce mental static through 478 resonance breathing that accesses theta states where reality's render cue becomes audible. Applying this to major life changes like career transitions. Instead of anxiously rehearsing answers for that important interview, spend days physically embodying the version of yourself who already has the position. Dressing, speaking, and carrying yourself as that future self until reality re-indexes around your conviction. The universe responds not to your words, but to your embodied state. Most people navigate reality from the boat perspective, tossed by currents of circumstance, crying, they ruined my life, or time is running out, perpetually trapped in emotional rapids. The radical shift comes when you climb to the mountain perspective, the higher consciousness vantage where all river branches become visible. From this summit, you recognize your enemy as merely your shadow self navigating a parallel stream. You see apparent disasters as openings to 17 new tributaries. You understand time as the water you swim through rather than the threatening shore. Scientific tools facilitate this climb. Meditation produces measurable cortical thinning that dissolves time-bound thinking. 
psychedelics temporarily shut down the brain's default mode network that maintains linear identity. Flow states trigger temporal dissolution, where hours feel like minutes. This elevated view reveals that what seemed like destiny was merely habitual navigation. The ultimate revelation rewrites your purpose. You are not building a future, but remembering one that already exists. The wealth, relationships, and freedom you seek aren't waiting to be created. They're fully formed realities in carriage 9304 of your existence train. Your entire mission reduces to vibrating at that carriage's precise frequency until the cosmic train shifts tracks to meet you. This exposes the suffering paradox. If pain is optional across infinite timelines, why do we consistently choose branches where it persists? The uncomfortable answer reveals how familiarity feels safer than freedom, how we'd rather cling to known miseries than risk unknown joy. The invitation becomes clear. Step into the branch where your wounds transform into wisdom libraries. Your perceived flaws become encryption keys to higher states, and your entire existence unfolds as intentional art rather than accidental circumstance. Close your eyes and breathe deeply. Feel how the past remains present as the scent of rain on childhood soil, since the future as candlelight flickering in distant windows. Recognize yourself as the lens through which timeless light focuses into temporary experience. The cosmic script is written, the stage is perfectly set, the role is irrevocably yours. But the performance, that remains forever improvised. Your choices in this eternal now determine which scenes you inhabit, which lines you speak, which realities you make visible, the stone of time never weighed you down. You were always the sculptor holding the chisel, 